Hi everybody, Jenny here, coming to you with an update on day 14 of round 2 in HCG for this summer. And um, round 1, lost 17.8 pounds, took a month off, had lots of parties, graduations, festivities, vacations, <laughs> other food being prepared for me, and gained about 9 back. Um, and now I've lost almost that full nine in round two, two weeks in. So um, in the next day or two, I will finally feel like I'm actually losing, losing again, which will feel really good. Uh, that being said, I want to say that yesterday was a day that I just felt really good in my clothes and felt like I had more energy to move around, felt like my legs were looking a little bit thinner when I would like get in bed and I'd look at my legs get in, I'm like, they don't feel like they're as wide. I just, I feel like things are going in the right direction. So the scale has essentially given me a stall for the past five days. It has gone up, down, up, down, up, down, crazily. I have purchased a second scale thinking that there was a problem with my scale. <laughs> Knowing that my body is one that fluctuates a lot, like these people who are always the same on their uh, scales, I just envy. I mean, they're like, whoo, I gained two pounds, I have to lose weight. Like, I can gain two pounds in 15 minutes. Like, I just, I don't know. I don't understand. Um, but they're like, oh, in the past week I gained you know, or in the past month I've gained two pounds, or in the past six months I've gained two pounds, I need to lose it. I just can't relate to you. I just can't. That's not who I am. That's not my body. Mine fluctuates a lot. But I've been seeing some crazy fluctuations on the scale, like more than usual, so it made me believe that, well, I've had the scale for, you know, I don't know, five years. Maybe the calibration's starting to get off on it. It's not as accurate as it used to be. I'll just get a new one. So I looked up online, found one that um, people said was very accurate and that they uh, really liked, and I bought it. And when I first got on it, it said that I was 0.2 pounds less than what the other one said. So I like the scale. <laughs> um, now I'm seeing more variability. Today it was a half a pound off. It's saying I'm a half a pound lighter, I believe. Yeah, it's saying I'm a half a pound lighter. So I do like it. It's a nice scale. Um, but I, I I don't know about the accuracy because the numbers aren't always, you know, to be 0.2 off now, it's another 0.3 off, so it's a full half pound off. Um, in, a, in a time when you're losing weight and you're looking at the points at the end, I don't know that it's any more accurate than the other one. And here's the most interesting thing. Yesterday, I got on the scale, and I think I said this yesterday, and if I did, I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself, I'll go quick. And if I didn't, I just think it's important information for you to know. I got on the scale, in case you can relate and you're the same way. I got on the scale yesterday and it said what it said. Okay, both of them had, let's say they were a half a pound off from each other. Okay. And then they were both higher than I would have liked. So I thought, well, that's too bad the weight is as high as I thought it was. I thought I'd get on the scale and it'd be a lot less. Okay. So it was higher. And then I started getting ready in the morning and I thought I'm going to get on the scales again because I had been noticing a trend that I get on the scale and I weigh a certain amount and I start moving around and for some reason the scale gets lighter within that 30 minute period of time that I'm getting ready in the morning. Which doesn't make sense because one of the things I do is spray my hair down with water and kind of scrunch it up to get the curls back because after sleeping on it, it just be, kind of becomes like a frizz ball. Um, so I feel like it should weigh more because there's water in my hair. But essentially I'm wearing the exact same clothes. Everything else is the same. I'm just moving about and getting ready. So I got on the scale yesterday after about 15 minutes and the scale went down on both of them respectively the same amount like 0.3 pounds or something like that and then I was doing a little bit more and I thought well that's interesting and I went back on both of them right before I taught my class so now we're at about a 30 minute mark and they both went up to what the original numbers were both of them together did the exact same thing how is that even possible 
that within a 30 minute period of time, my weight can be less, my weight can be more. Like I know that there's water retention and loss of water, but uh, I didn't like go to the bathroom in, in between. Like I do that first thing when I get up in the morning before I get on the scale. So I don't know. I can't figure it out, but I am telling you my body has a lot of volatility when it comes to weight. So I have to look at these last five days where like one day I gain 1.5 pounds and I lose 1.2 pounds and I gain 1.5 and know that essentially if I look at my weight today and I look at my weight from five days ago, it's basically the same. So that's what a stall looks like in my world. Mm, a lot of variability in the end, we're basically at the same point that we were before. So I need to work on it. Uh, what did the scale say? My old scale said that I had lost 1.2 pounds. My new scale said I lost 1.5 pounds. Now I'm comparing the numbers to the number on that same scale from the day before. So the old scale comparing the numbers from the day before and today said that I lost 1.2 pounds. The new scale from the day before and today said that I lost 1.5 pounds. I would think that the old scale would be more accurate than the new scale because it's I mean I didn't lose a pound and a half in a day right I probably didn't even lose 1.2 but I don't know so what I'm doing is I'm writing both numbers down on my chart now and we're gonna see in about 30 days what the overall consensus is and which one stays closer which one has less variability going up and down um, and overall what I think would be the most accurate number in the very end. So we'll see. It's a little bit of a test. So there we are. I am still 0.2 now away from matching my goal weight at the end of round one. We'll get there folks. We'll get there. Okay. So today is a one more little sidestep for you and I am going to talk about the drops that I use. Oh, and of course I closed everything out. Listen, I did this video. I had I did a taught a class and I had a half hour break and then I taught the rest of my classes. In that half hour break I recorded or thought I recorded. I sat here and I talked to a, a computer monitor <laughs> and um, it didn't record. So shoot, let me go back really quick and see if I can pull up. Basically, um, I wanted to talk about the fact that I see um, let me close this out. I'm going to see if I can go back in here and look under my history. Recently closed. Yes. Here we go. Um, I wanted to talk about the fact that I, um, okay, sorry, completely distracted to pull that up and that was terrible. I don't know why you're still watching, that I never really addressed the fact of HCG pure hormone versus an HCG synthetic hormone. Um, I want to start off by saying I am not telling you to buy these. I'm not making any recommendation in terms of you need to do HCG you need to be on the HCG diet, you need to have the 500 calories a day. I'm not telling you any of that. This is a channel where I just share information. I read to you from the original protocol so that you know what it says. You make your own choice. You do what you want to do. And never do anything without consulting a physician, obviously. Um, but I'm just sharing what I do. Okay, this is strictly what I do. I don't do the pure HCG hormone. One. I don't want to put a needle in myself <laughs> every day. The thought of injecting something into my body somehow seems so much more invasive and significant and should be followed by a doctor <laughs> more closely than just by putting the grape flavored drops under my tongue. I don't know. I mean, it, it could be exactly the same in the end. Uh, but And this is not actually putting in the pure hormone. These are... Um, synthetic ingredients um, that all when working together imitate if you will the HCG hormone in our bodies now for me 
these work in a couple of ways. Um, the research I was doing was about HDG. I was looking into like the different hormone versus this and basically I just find a lot of information online that is telling you be careful or don't do it. Don't put the HDG hormone in your body. You shouldn't do it. You shouldn't do anything without a doctor's supervision in that. Other places have said that the HCG hormone or the synthetic hormone do absolutely nothing. The only reason why you're losing weight is because you're on uh, a 500 calorie restricted diet. Other people have said that the only reason you're losing weight is because you've eliminated all your carbs and you're putting your body into ketosis and you're losing weight that in that way. Um, there's all kinds of different um, fields of thought that are out there. Let me tell you what my personal opinion is and what my experience is. I 100% agree that I am partly losing weight because I am only intaking 500 calories a day. There's no way you can deny that. If I was taking in more calories, I wouldn't be losing as much weight, right? I also agree that by eliminating carbs, my weight is going down some regards purely by eliminating a lot of the excess water that I retain in my body because carbs retain water and and I am a body who retains a lot of water that's the variability on my scale um, so that um, is helpful for that but also I understand the philosophy that when you don't have the carbs in your body that it, that it releases the ketones and um, the ketones are what help go to your fat reserves and use the fat in your body in the same way that the HCG hormone does. So why do I take this if I can just eat 500 calories a day and make it just low carb? Because then you'd be starving yourself. <laughs> Something in this makes my stomach not growl, makes me not hungry in a significant way because I am the kind of person who gains weight not so much by poor choices like I can never eat ice cream for the rest of my life and be fine like sure candies hard candies that kind of stuff I cannot look at it the rest of my life if somebody told me I couldn't have chocolate it would make me very sad but I'd be okay I could live without having any chocolate um, I love chocolate if I'm gonna have any dessert it would be a chocolate something chocolate something or other. I also like fruit based things like pastries with fruit in them. I don't like fruit, fruit flavored things in general but actual pure fruits in things like in a pie. Love. Um, and that's basically because of the extra sugar and compote and everything else that's associated with it not just the fruit. Otherwise I would just eat fruits and I'm not a big fan of just eating fruits. I kind of force myself to do it because I know I should but not on HCG. Okay. This is going to be all over the place, this video. I apologize because now I keep second guessing myself. What did I just say now? What did I say earlier today in the video that didn't record? Um, I find myself, and I've mentioned this a couple times on the video, in the middle of the day going, I feel like I really want to eat now. I just feel like I really want to eat. I want something to eat. And then I pause and think, is it time for drops? And almost 100% of the time it is time for me to take some drops. I had forgotten my next dosage of drops. If I can consistently the three times a day remember to take them, I never go, oh I want to eat. How can it get rid of my desire to want to eat? I mean there is still always the willingness to eat, but the hunger is completely gone. Um, and because the hunger is gone and because the longer I go with you know not having carbs, I'm uh, also starting to work on staying off that uh, sensation and feeling of I just want to eat. No, I'm not hungry, but I want to eat. Um, this gets rid of that for me. Uh, uh, so, in my brain, it is doing what it needs to do to somehow tap into those fat reserves and using that 
food is energy because I have energy all day. I'm not lethargic and tired and laying around. I'm doing things all day long. So where is that energy coming from if I'm not taking it in orally? It has to be coming from within my body. It has to be coming from my fat reserves, which this is doing. And the fact that we're on a low-carb diet is helping it also put you into ketosis, and that's helping you as well. But when I have done just the, um, the uh, ketogenic diet on my own, I haven't been able to have the same success that I have on HCG. It just I not at all. And my food content is considerably higher. There you go. I don't know. I don't know. I think all the things are, are at play at the same time. But I can tell you while all the things are at play, if I take this one component out of the formula, that's when I tank. And I can no longer be as successful. I am willing to go as far, although I don't believe this at all, but I am willing to go as far as to say there's a small tiny percentage chance that it's the placebo effect. That I know that I'm taking these drops three times a day and therefore this is happening in my body and I don't need to eat. That there's some subconscious thing going on while I'm taking these. I don't think that's true. I honestly don't. Because even if I get to the point that I feel like I'm like really hungry, my stomach's like clenching, and I take this, that physical feeling stops. But then I guess our psych- our brains and our subconscious are very strong, and maybe taking the drops, I psychologically tell myself in my brain that I have had what I need, and then it stops. I don't know. It's a possibility. So... That's all I wanted to share today, was to point out that these are synthetic drops. These are not pure HCG hormone going into you. So when it says um, it's dangerous to take the hormone without a doctor's um, supervision, I think it's dangerous to put anything in your body without a doctor's supervision. I, myself, personally, um, did my first round of this about four years ago without consulting my doctor first. I just saw a girlfriend of mine that was the same body makeup as me and who I had known for about a decade. We've always been about the same weight. Both of us kind of go up and down a little bit depending on the season and the year. And then boom, she was a skinny mini one day. And then she shared this with me. And that's where I, that's why I get this particular brand just because this is what she used. And this is also made in America. That makes me feel more comfortable too. I don't want to put anything in my body that came from a third world country or a second world country or a first world country, any other country besides the United States of America. Um, So, yeah, this is a liquid dietary supplement hormone-free formula. 100% something. Oh my gosh, it is so incredibly tiny. 100%. I need a magnifying glass. uh, Natural. 100% natural. Although it's a synthetic hormone. (laughs) So, go figure. I don't know. I don't know. All I know is it works. For me. It works for me. You do you. Boo. I did talk to my doctor um, about, I don't know, maybe two years ago when I went in. And I have noticed coming off of HCG that I can hit a wall emotionally. And I also noticed that while I'm on HCG, I'm in a really good mood comparatively to my normal everyday stance. Um, So I have energy. I'm in a good mood. I forget about it once I stop until about two or three days later, like sometime in that next week. Like I'll find myself just like really being almost depressed one day. Like one day I was actually driving in the car and I just started to cry. And I didn't know why. And I was just like, everything is fine today. Why am I so emotional? Coming off of this affects that. So somehow it plays, it does work with my hormones in a positive way. So in the future, I'm going to go see some sort of, I don't know if it's an endocrinologist, I don't know, hormone specialist for women. I need to make an appointment to have to go in and discuss this whole situation with them and then just in general in keeping those hormones and being that I'm at the point that menopause is on the horizon I feel like I should be consulting them anyway um, so that we can keep 
a constant emotional state throughout the next five years or so um, and figure out what is in this that puts me in that good mood which makes me a little nervous to go off of it um, at the end if I think about it if I don't think about it then all of a sudden when I hit that lull I just go oh yeah I'm not on the HCG drops anymore so something in these ingredients L-glucitonin L-cronitin L-beta agmatine I don't know I don't even know what all these are um, but oh gosh it's so incredibly tiny that is like itty bitty minuscule reading um, okay that's all I have to share about that oh I was gonna say so I did talk to my doctor once and I told her that I was taking it and that was on this 500 calorie diet and the philosophy behind it and all that she hadn't heard about it the people using this as a diet this was about well maybe it was three years ago and she just said well um, it is not unusual uh, she works out at the Cleveland Clinic, world-renowned Cleveland Clinic. And she said it is not unusual um, for them to have diets where they restrict people to 500 calories for weight loss purposes as long as the content of what they're eating is healthy and they're taking a multivitamin. Um, I also know just from my research before doing HCG that the Mayo Clinic has a 500 calorie diet that's a low-carb diet that they put people on prior to um, having heart surgeries um, and then even people going into ga gastric bypass have to like lose weight you have to make sure your heart is healthy before you go under uh, a major surgery unless it's an emergency surgery and then you just do what you need to do um, so to make yourself he heart healthy they also try to get rid of as much extra fat in the body as possible and so they do go on these restrictive diets um, the cabbage soup diet is the one that I think was originally originated from the Mayo Clinic too. Cabbage soup diet has almost zero calories in it and it was like you eat cabbage soup every day and then like the one day you have vegetables with it but only no starches, no corn, no potatoes, nothing good. It's like leeks and celery and stuff like it was like virtually no um, and then another day you have fruits with it and the next day you have fruits and vegetables then you can have a little bit of meat um, there's no meat in the cabbage soup diet it's just broth and vegetables that have zero calories essentially so like talk about a restrictive diet I, I did it once I did lose weight on it it was miserable to me because I don't like soups in general and so it was a struggle to get through this I would have rather eaten celery sticks than try to force this soup down every day and you're supposed to eat as much of the soup as possible throughout the course of the day because again it has zero calories so it kind of feeds your system and keeps your metabolism going anyway that being said there are diets out there where they say it's safe to go ahead and do this to lose weight um, and they don't have the added benefit of possibly if it's true that the HCG hormone is tapping into your fat reserves helping you do that um, while all these other things are going on so that just goes to sh show and the, my doctor just said you know it's it's okay she had said also that like she knows for herself she can never eat more than a thousand calories a day or she will gain weight end of story she said that's just it I just know for my type my body type I have learned over time thousand calories is my limit everyone has a different limit to what they are obviously 500 she goes I'm not going to recommend that you do that um, but you need to as long as you have energy and you're not hungry and you're taking a multivitamin and the foods that you're choosing to eat are not processed foods but healthy vegetables and, and proteins she said uh, you know I'll, she's I'm not going to say you have to absolutely stop what you're doing so that's what my doctor told me so that was my doctor's now everyone's body's different she knows mine um, so don't take that as a doctor's advice for you find your own doctor's recommendation all right that's all I have for today I just wanted to go over that and make sure because we talk about it I will continue to talk about it as if I am taking a hormone but I just wanted to be clear about the fact that it wasn't a pure hormone hormone that I am taking um, I do believe the injections are and so that's a whole nother world that's it that's all I have to share for today if you have any questions about it let me know put it down below and please like and subscribe to this channel like this video 
subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you tomorrow, and tomorrow I'll get back on track with the topic we had before, which are reasons that we continue to overeat. Take care. Have a great day. Bye.